Steve Lewis, uh, often referred as the Maestro, D A M A E S T R O, <laughs> the Maestro. Uh, I want to talk uh, today about this incredible bass that Marcus has created uh, through the company Sire Guitars. Uh, this is the Sire V7 bass. Uh, this is the five string version. Um, and I just kind of want to explain and then do sound examples of what the bass really sounds like. Uh, I'm not running through any amplification, uh, no mic on the speakers, that kind of thing. I'm running actually direct. The only amplification is the uh, run the Avalon Bass DI. <sighs> so <clears throat> this bass is incredible. Uh, out of the box, you can just go to your gig and play it. I mean, it's playable out of the box. Uh, the only thing I did different, because I'm not really an aggressive player, so I did do a neck adjustment and I lowered the strings just a hair just to fit my style of playing. Uh, and the only thing differently I'm going to do is I'm going to um, shave the neck down just a little bit to get the clear coat off. I don't like basses with clear coat uh, shellac on the neck. So that'll be the very next thing I do. But other than that, and that's just a personal preference thing for me, uh, this is the Swamp Ash version with the maple neck. Uh, and I've had both over here. Uh, I'm a tech as well. Uh, I've had a Alder Rosewood 5. Uh, and I'm waiting to hear the uh, Ash Rosewood. Just kind of really kind of do a comparison between the two woods. I mean the two, you know, neck woods. Uh, but I, they, they're incredible, man. Now I will say, uh, because this is... Um, ash wood and swamp ash is a little heavier now when i say a little heavier i ain't talking about like the 70s uh fender jasses it's not a, it's not a brick by no means it's you know it's well balanced uh but when you when you have both of them in your hand you have the alder versus the ash the, uh, the ash is a little a slightly i just say slightly slightly heavier uh so it just depending on your playability whether or not you know you stand up and play, you stand and play a lot. I'm a session player, so most of my playing is what I'm doing now, sitting down. Uh, but I can wear this bass because I play at service sometimes, so this bass does not fatigue me like my Fender did. Uh, so it's just depending on you know your style of playing and what kind of sound you want. I will say this uh, that the the Swamp Ash seems to be a little forward uh in the mix i've recorded both bases and this seems to be a little bit more aggressive sounding which for me i love it cuts through a little bit more uh and but like i said you won't and that's just that's just in doing the comparison if there was not a comparison in there i wouldn't really know the difference uh so the, uh, because i guess because the because of the rosewood neck on the alder and the alder body being a softer wood it sits back just a little bit i mean you know i mean not day and night at all so that's my take, but it is a warmer wood, of course. So just depending on what you want, uh, but I am very, I am very satisfied with this bass, <coughs> and I, I do compare it to some of the fifteen hundred, two thousand dollar bases, and uh, it, it's it's up there, man. I, I still don't know how they're making money from it. I I, I don't know, I, I don't get it, but I'm not worried about it. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful to own it. I'm grateful to have it in my in my arsenal of bases, and it's right now it's my go-to bass. I play it before I play anything else. And if I'm doing sessions, this is the first bass I pick up. And if it works for that particular style of song, I play it. If not, then I get another bass. But this is the bass I always have in the bag. Uh, so let me play it. This is going to be in passive mode. Make sure. Yeah. So this is passive mode. This is fingering. Check it out. And then I go through the knob arrangements. So. All right, I do the slap the same way. This is still passive. Uh, let me turn. This, let me do it again. I turn the passive tone all the way up. Same setting, flat, passive tone all the way up, this is a slap. 
All right, so now let's go to the active and then I'll explain, let me explain what each knob does and I think it'll bring a little bit more clarity to what the bass is because most people when they see this bass, they're like, oh my God, I don't know what to do with all those knobs. And I think, you know, once it's, <coughs> once it's explained, because it, it is, you know, uh, if you never played a bass and have this type of control with EQ, it kind of mess you up. So let me do this. The very first knob, which is this one, this is your volume knob. The one right below it is your passive tone. This knob works in either passive or active mode. But this knob for me yields the vintage tone in active mode. Right below that is your pickup blend. It allow you to go between both set of pickups. Uh, below that is your treble. Uh, the mid stack pot is your mid boost cut. And then you have your mid frequency booster cut. And it's not really boosted cut in the frequency, it's just you have all these different frequencies and you have a, a, a middle detent for that pot. Uh, and then you have your bass booster cut. So each one of the pots have a center detent. Uh, and then you have your on and active on and off switch. So that explains the preamp for the most part. And like I said, I'll do it. Uh, this is I'm running directly through Avalon DI, so there's no amplification, no speakers I'm going through. So the sound of the bass you're hearing, Outside of the preamplification of the Avalon is the sound of the bass. Uh, preamp is on. Um, and this is the mid pot. I got it all the way up. And this is the frequency. You see it? You hear it? I mean, I'm sorry. So you can find the frequency that you like, dial it in, you can subtract it, or you can add it, you know, either way. So that's what the center, um, that's what the frequency, mid frequency pot does. Just gives you a little bit more um, EQ control and adds a little bit more clarity and punch to the bass that wouldn't be there if that mid pot wasn't there. Uh, so I'm gonna turn the mid all the way out. So I'm cutting the mid, bass is all the way up, trouble's all the way up. I'm in, a center, I'm in the middle uh, with the uh, mix uh, pickup blend and then Passive tone is like middle ways. I still like the vintage, so I, I don't never run it all the way up. So this is what this bass sounds like with the mid out, basically. All right, I turn the turn. Uh, I tone the. I tone it down a little bit more with the passive tone because that was still a little bright for me. And then I'll play it again and I'll turn the mid to the middle way up. Here we go, same line. All right. So basically, in this mode, I was functioning as a two band uh, EQ, bass and treble. So now I'm adding the mid about middle ways. Uh, the mid frequency pot is in the middle as well. Here we go. Mid, mid out, alright, so hope that explains the bass, and by, by, by the way, this bass drops down to 20 hertz in its lower frequency, incredible, I don't even know how this preamp is able to hold all of that, maybe because it's 18 volt, I'm not sure. Uh, most of the bases, um, the low, the low extension of the bases, um, stop around 40 hertz, but this thing goes down to 20 hertz. So this thing really fills up the the, the uh, EQ spectrum, man. And you don't have to add a lot of low end to your, you know, amp. You know, if you're running the amplifier, you don't have to run a lot of bottom end because you're not having to recreate the bottom that's not there. Cause it is there. So, um, like I said, this is the Swamp Ash version with the Maple Neck, uh, incredible bass, 18 volt, neck through, uh, translucent. I mean, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's just not a white bass. You can see the wood grain through it. So very incredible bass.
Um, I did install the uh, chrome knobs, uh, shipped with the black knobs, so they send, they send you actually two sets of knobs, uh, and I bought the, the chrome plate as well. So here's that base. Uh, I think everybody should own. You should definitely have it in your arsenal. It's my go-to base. Um, glad to be glad to have it <laughs> what i was trying to say glad to have it so i was getting a lot of emails about this base uh asking questions about it and how i set my base and this 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 and i can't tell you how i set my base because it just depends on what kind of music i'm playing but that gives you kind of what the base is what it does and have fun with it man it's, it's an incredible base uh they're, they're a very smart company to keep it in-house, not having to sell this stuff to retail, uh, and that's how they're able to keep the price down. So, yeah, this base would probably sell for about $1,500 had it been in the retail stores. So, while the prices are cheap, go get you one. Love this base. Hope this helps. Sorry, guitars, baby.